How can we make the the user experience in in the more modern, better way? Well, I think I mean. EPGs have been around for a really, really long time. There needs to be some innovation around it. I mean, certainly, you know, grouping channels within genres is helpful, but I think the number one issue right now is just getting to the EPG on a lot of these uh, TV setups. So like we've launched across most of the major television OEMs. um, And I'd say very, very few of them have figured out how to, how to get people into the, the service itself. It's the most basic thing but it's the most difficult thing. And so um, it starts with that. I mean, if it takes, you know, seven clicks to get into, get to the EPG, there's going to be a huge problem for everybody. Um, so unfortunately, like I don't, I don't have any, um, you know, sort of magical ideas around UI. I'm not a UI expert, but at the most basic level, it's, it's how do people discover the service on the TV first and foremost. And then when they, when they get into the service, how do you get them watching content immediately? And I feel like um, a a lot of, you know, what I see in terms of user user experience is very, very clunky right now. And it's, and it's to the detriment of everybody, including the, the, the platform folks. Yeah. Kevin, comments. Well, I agree. And I, I also, um, I, you know, so I spent uh, many years as a digital agency before starting best ever channels with my partner and audience acquisition was always prime. And so I, uh, I always think in terms of how can I get an audience here and let's, how can I get the audience to do the work? I mean, we're developing a companion app that uh, until the EPGs catch up, until the technology is there on your television set, you know, how can I create live chats and interaction? Uh, we have a show for wits called The Riff, where the audience actually gives the comedians subjects to, uh, to riff about. And um, and that's been done not live, but live makes a whole lot more sense. How can I do that, um, you know, with a companion app in the meanwhile, while we're waiting for the, the sets to catch up? And I think as soon as the audience starts using these tools, then you'll see, you know, the, the innovative platform starting to integrate them. But we've got to get the audience used to it. Uh, and, and that can always take a little bit longer than we think. Yeah, I think that ties into a question from one of our anonymous attendees that are, how can we differentiate a fast channel from a traditional ad supported linear channels? It is, at the moment, they are most of the cases are very similar, but how can we make them a little bit more spicy, a little bit more lean in? Maybe Marissa, you can comment on that. How, how do you make a, a linear channel more lean in approach and then interactive? I think it comes down to the programming and John, to Jonathan's point of kind of what what kind of new feature sets can from a programming perspective can you integrate? Um, you know, I think I think we can add as much as we can from the from the UI part of of, of things. For example, on our homepage, all of us, every single buddy's experience would be different. Um, we set up our our UI in, in carousels, and we have some of those that are static, so everyone would see, hey, here's the live sports, what's on. But what Dan sees for recommendations would be very different than what I see. And that's what's based on his his own proprietary viewership, as well as what we think, hey, he's watched this show. We think he would like this show. So we are using that to try to drive discoverability um, and and create that personalized experience so that not everybody is getting the same force-fed content across the board. Uh, 